It's all cool. How you doing? All right, so this is another episode of It's All Cool. Might name it differently in the future. I definitely need to realize I don't need to talk as loud as I do. So this video, I did do this video before. I did post several poems. It was a 20 minute video. And I tried splitting it down to a 10 minute video. And that was just far, far too difficult. Because apparently you can't really use Windows Movie Maker on a computer from 2012 to do the amount of splitting I was trying to do without actually knowing the program. And if the volume is too loud, I do apologize. I am trying to talk a little bit lower. I am a very loud talker. So we'll just see how that goes. I did, uh, as I said, recite a few poems. Um, I emphasized this video series way too much on progression and success and updating and everything. I'm just going to do this and have fun with it and uh, do minor updates about myself uh, so I can call myself out. But more so, you know, I'm going to do what I enjoy and see where that goes. So I'm just going to just read a lot of my poems. I have 300 in total. Um, so that'll be a good bit of videos. Anyway, um, all right, so this poem is called Waiting for Death. I'm not going to preface these. Um, just get your own meaning, and if you have your own meaning, comment it and let us know what you think, because whatever you interpret from what I write is my goal. It's not what my interpretation was, it's yours. So, again, this one is called Waiting for Death. Yet, yeah, I'm afraid of death. I'm waiting to die. I'm afraid I'll fry in the afterlife. Waiting for death, but yet afraid of death. I'm waiting to die. And I cry, because I know that I'll miss the sky. Waiting for death, but afraid of death. I'm just waiting to die. Oh, the land of depression. Why must I fly over it into the swamp of life's rejection? Afraid of dying and trying to live, waiting to die, I sit here and lie. Zero are the cares that I give, so maybe I just don't even deserve to live. Okay, so that one was Waiting for Death. This one is called Who Am I? Who am I? Why am I? What kind of kid am I? What kind of sick am I? I float through life just waiting to die, even though I've tried and I've tried the hardest that I could, even to the point where I cry, I just, it's the blisters on my soul and my calloused young will that I even lie to myself as I write the zone poetic hell. I haven't even started, so why am I so scared? What comes after? What lies beyond? What comes next and what is hell? What is a heaven for a heathen who hates that he's breathing? I don't know, and I hope I won't. As much as I want to die, I still just hope that I don't. And that one was called Who Am I? This one is my take on the Lord's Prayer, because I, it wasn't applicable, and uh, actually, not to be a cult leader or anything, but I wrote my own Bible, more so just to describe and clarify and identify my own beliefs um, and create a system for it. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, this was before I found that, so this was more anger related, but uh, it's based on the Lord's Prayer. I have no shepherd that restores my soul. My rage guides me through the paths of lividity and insanity for my mind's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for my evil reigns over the entire goddamn valley. Thy breath and thy thoughts comfort me. I prepare a table for myself in the presence of no one. My mind's been anointed with grandeur. My cup overflows. So, that was called the Heathen's Prayer. Um, H-E-A-T-H-E-N, not H-E-D-O-N. Those are two different things. This one is H-E-A-T-H-E-N. Um, okay, so this next one is called Sleep is My Death. Sleep is my death, the kind of death with air in my chest. Unlike the rest who stab or slit or pop or shoot or hang, I just sleep. 
I sleep at ease, because before I was on my knees, pleading, please, oh please, just kill me, please. But then I realized it's about time I choose, something non-destructive, something more constructive. Once I would inflict pain, but now I'm flying high in life, just playing games. If I ever feel like just ending it, I just shut my eyes and start to pretend it. I imagine it, and eight hours later, I ask what happened to it. Sleep is my death. Every night I can die and end my day. And every morning I rise a brand new way. That's kind of deep and dark. That one's called Sleep is My Death. This one is called I Deserve to Die. And it's very short. I deserve to die. I'm done crying and trying again and again. Just stop it now. Just close my eyes and bury me alive. For I deserve to die. I had a lot of issues when I was writing these poems. A lot of these came right after my mom died. And um, just a really dark, lonely time in my life. Just of self-identity and uh, whatnot. As well as um, a lot of them were written. I wrote a lot during a time of a toxic relationship. And uh, it's head over heels for this girl till this day. But I'll tell you what, man. That shit was toxic. So... A lot of these are very mixed in the meaning that they have. Um, so this one is about one of those. How does one be good? Is what this title is. How does one be good? How does one stop being bad? After the fact, when you've understood what you've done, when what's done is done and you know what you've done, when words can't describe this kind of sad, like this kind of mad, the madness of myself, it's always a common hell. How does one change their ways? How does one rise to grace, to get out of this place, to get out of this space? I don't know, but I try anyways for every future day. I try every future way. Starting with this present day, I just be strong and I be right and I think about it and I don't be wrong. I can think once, I can think twice, I can think about it all the time. I can do this or I can do that. But just don't make that same mistake that same mistake of ever becoming that mad. It isn't that bad. It's just only another path. So walk it out and remember to calm yourself down. Again, let me know what you guys think this the meaning of these things are in the comments. I would love to hear your interpretation of these things. Some of them are more obvious, like um, sometimes I wrote about my birthday, like the following poem, which is titled A Year Ago, and... Uh, you know, after my mom passed, it was really hard to get over holidays and events and birthdays and whatnot. So, this is uh, the first paragraph of this poem I actually wrote a year after she died, during my first birthday after her. And then I revisited the poem two years after that. So, this is one poem and then two. So, it's, it's pretty cool seeing the, uh, the evolve the adaptation or whatnot, but uh, the first paragraph was the original, everything else is what I rewrote after that. This one is called A Year Ago. March 11th is my birthday, and it's also the worst day. My feelings are erupting, and it's always abruptly. I just want to forget and not be upset, so I'll skip that hell and move right on to the 12th. Those are words I spoke just a year ago today. Words injected with pain and anguish. Those words I had spoke, they had power. Power to invoke my thoughts of ought to be. Power to stop fate from choking me. To motivate me and change me. So I stopped complicating things and I began contemplating things. Those words I spoke just a year ago, just a year ago today, mean nothing to me now. But I can't deny that without them, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have the one that I hold dear. I wouldn't have a good life, and I wouldn't have let go of the fear. But I wrote a poem, and several minutes later, an epiphany was laid in place, one of not pain, but one of change. So, that one's pretty cool. Um, it was by Adam, and my girlfriend helped me, but toxic and then just anyway so 
All right, this one is called Poems, and it's a poem. All right. Um, some people's poems can be good or bad. They can make you happy or sad. They can give you purpose or make you nervous. But as for me, my poems are my totems, full of mystical emotion and lively focus. My poems are my anchor, thrown into the psyche's ocean, and depending on the words that I've chosen, I can keep myself there, holding on unless the chain is broken. I hold on to my totem, I write about my totem, I read about my totem, and I breathe in my totem. My poems are more than a mystical emotion. They are more than just a spiritual focus. They bear the notion that ideas can be expressed and manifested into physical actions and ailments more than just mental derailments. I really love words. I don't know if you can tell. I really love words. <laughs> Man, dry mouth is an issue that we need to deal with. Uh, anyway, this one is funny. This one I wrote while I was sick one day. <laughs> uh, sick is when you sneeze, sick is when you cough, sick is when you vomit, or ending up sleeping in the closet. Sick is rough, sick is tough, sick is always long enough. When you're missing the medicine stuff. Sick is when you tear up, sick is when you veer off. Sick is when you lay down, and when your snot is smeared all over your nightgown. But I don't feel that kind of sick. It's in, I miss her sick. And the thought of not being with her has manifested into my mind, and it infests my time. The feeling of being sick feels like the opposite of bliss, so I wait, waiting for her to come back, waiting for that kiss. The kiss that doesn't belong on her lips, but the one that belongs on her soul. Uh, I forgot that one ended that way. That's pretty cool. This one is called As She Lays. Uh, As She Lays. As she lays here in my bed, I am here, writing words down, pouring from my head. She is still, she is calm. I hear her breathe while waiting... Okay, so this one is going to be one of the harder ones that I have to read. And I'm not really, like, I, the titles mean nothing. It was just pretty much the first few wor words. But, uh... Just deal with it. Um, okay, so... As she lays... As she lays on my bed, I am here, writing down words, pouring from my head. She is still, she is calm, I hear her breathe, while writing to a dot com. I must be quiet, I must not be loud. I must not wake her, I'll just let her sleep for now. I wonder if she's dreaming, I wonder what she's thinking. Is she dreaming dreams of things, or is she leaving dreamland and returning back to life to me? She's fast asleep, spread out, the blanket is missing from her knees, and as a poet, I pause this poem to cloth her knees with my blanket, as you see. I'll be right back. Okay, how to cloth them knees. Okay, what was that? Okay, so as a poet, I pause this poem to cloth her knees with my blanket, as you see. She's not really here. I think she's amazing. Maybe she's dreaming of being a queen of a maze type thing. She sleeps so comfortably as I'm writing like a bumblebee. Whether it's knights and dragons or overcoming something tragic, dream my love, dream dreams of things, and when you wake, please just sing them to me. So, I wrote that, like, just, when you wake up, tell me about them dreams. Alright, this is the last one, because I'm at 13 minutes and this one's epic. For you guys, maybe, but not for me. Alright, um, so this one's called Empty Bed, and, uh, damn, I believe I wrote this. Who the fuck is messaging me? Best friends, no one's messaging you when you're doing vlogs, right? Tell me what, I mean, tell me about it. Anyway, um... Man, I really need to drink more water, because it's hard to freeze frame. <sighs> and I just had to collect myself before this poem, because uh, anyway, this is after the fact. Empty bed. 
I look at my empty bed, and then my empty head begins to spin. I look at the bed's empty threads, and the bed's empty spread, and within my empty little head, through my thoughts I begin to tread. The space where she laid is empty. The place where she stayed is empty. The hall where she walked is empty. The computer that she used is off, and the games that she played are deleted. I'm attempting to soothe myself, to calm myself, to calm myself. She left in a rush and forgot her necklace. She left in a rush and forgot her makeup, so fast, so reckless. I look at my empty room and now I'm breathless. I can't breathe, I'm out of air, so I sit here and I sit there, the places where she would be, I sit there once, twice, and even times three. But no matter how much I exist where she existed, no matter how no matter how much of hers that I touch, it's never enough. It's it isn't her actual love, it's just it's just a sort it I can't breathe, I'm out of air, so I sit here and I sit there, the places where she would be, I sit there once, twice, and even times three, but no matter how much I exist, where she existed, no matter what of hers that I touch, it's never enough, it isn't her actual love, it's just, it's just sort of. And there we fucking go. As long as I can just push those emotions down, like... As deep down as I can go, that's all I need to do, you know. Just if, if you don't think about it, it doesn't hurt as much. And that's the logic that you need to have. I do, 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 do. Really don't do that, because that's actually very unhealthy. Please talk about it. Like, subscribe, share, comment. If you need to talk or anything, or just want to show people. Or if you enjoy writing your words or poetry or anything at all, just, again, do something to boost me and get me out there. I don't think it's all cool.